Damien Hirst is going to be one of the most interesting artists coming out of Great Britain. He really hits the mainstream in the mid-1980s, and some people argue brings postmodernism to art. Now, we've seen postmodernism in art leading up to Damien Hirst, but we're looking at some of his later works, and the issue of postmodernism is still one that is argued about to this day. Now, his wide-ranging practice installation art, sculpture, painting, and drawing has sought to challenge the boundaries between art, science, and pop culture. His energy and inventiveness and his consistently visceral, visually arresting work has made him a leading artist of his generation. Everything from dot paintings to, well, this, where we see a box on one side. This whole thing is encased in glass. In fact, there are two large glass compartments. And what you're seeing is on one side over here in the far compartment, there's a white box that is breeding ground for houseflies. Then there are holes through this uh, barrier between the two sides that allow the flies to come over and feed on an actual cow head. And directly above the cow head is a fly light, thus giving us this idea of life as temporary as life as something that, well, comes and goes, is unpredictable, that is, uh, yeah, transient. He explores the uncertainties at the core of human experience with pieces like this, such as love, life, death, loyalty, and betrayal through unexpected and unconventional media, often in a postmodern approach. For example, in this case, everyone takes something different. Some people will look at this as a grotesque image, shock art. Some people will look at this as sort of capturing something that art has never been able to capture before, which is the life cycle of a living thing, maybe capturing time itself, in that we see the flies born, feed, breed, and die. There's a lot of possibilities here, and his art becomes very complicated for this reason. But in this case, we're actually going to deal with mother and child, and it's actually mother and child Divided. This piece was created in 1993, and it will win a number of awards, including uh, exhibition at the 1993 Venice Biennial, and became the focal point of the 1995 Turner Prize at Tate Britain, then the Tate Gallery, the year that Hearst won the prize. And what we see is sort of a play on words as well as a play on different ideas. We see a mother and child, in this case a cow and her calf, well, physically divided. We can see the calf is obviously separated from the mother itself, but also each one is divided down the middle, bisecting the creature and giving us this idea of seeing inside it. In fact, you can walk in between the two halves. Now, the tanks are installed in pairs. The two halves of the calf in the front, two halves of the mother in the rear. With sufficient space in between each pair, that you can walk freely around them, although you are kind of squeezed into that middle area. And this allows us to view the inside of the animal. Now, one of the things that's interesting here, and that Hearst is playing with, is this idea of what makes something art. And so let me bring you back to when you were a child. When you were a child, if you create a great piece of art, your mom might have hung it on the refrigerator. If it was a really fantastic piece, she probably framed it. And that's what Hearst has done here. Those wooden frames around the formaldehyde tanks give us the sense of framed art and is supposed to put it in the appropriate context to exist within an art museum. This is really kind of interesting. It also, the use of the white frames, are in brilliant relief to the transparent turquoise of the formaldehyde solution. So, let's look at the piece. When we get up close, you notice on one side we see what appears to be 
a cow from the outside. And on the other side, we see the viscera and organs of the cow from the inside. From the outside, we are arguably disgusted by the work. After all, this is a taxidermied animal, and this should be a horrible thing. When we move to the inside, we are equally troubled by it. Now, if you want to be slightly more troubled by the work, imagine Damien Hurst running through a field going, Here, Betsy! You know, revving up a chainsaw and chasing a cow down to cut it in half. In reality, the cow was dead already, but there is video of Damon Hurst trying to cut a cow perfectly in half for this exhibition with a chainsaw and basically a forklift. It didn't work so well, but in the end, he got it right. Now, there's another issue to bring up, which is the savagery of the piece. We look at and we can't see it without going, oh my gosh, this is grotesque, this is horrific, and yet... We will happily go grocery shopping at the end of the week looking at bits of dead animal hanging out in the grocery store and choosing amongst them. Is there really that much difference between seeing ground beef and seeing the inside of the beef? And I'm not saying this to say you should become vegetarian or vegan or anything like that. It's to put into perspective that question of the visceral savagery of the work. Should we really be that shocked by an animal preserved and cut in half, or really cut in half, then preserved? Or should this call into question all of our ideas of what is disgusting and what isn't, what is acceptable and what isn't? As we look at the piece, it also becomes a bit of a memento mori, a bit of a question of death, because you can't look at it without realizing that, of course, the animals are dead. But yet we want to explore it. There's that deep, dark part inside of us, the part that says, go ahead and jump into the void, that wants to explore what the animal looks like from the outside. We may tell ourselves, or from the inside. We may tell ourselves it's because of intellectual curiosity or whatever else, but in fact, it's because there's that part of our brain that goes, hey, I kind of wonder, you know, what it looks like, since I'm unlikely to cut an animal in half myself. So there's a lot going on here. The sculpture will be seen as particularly innovative. The title, the piece itself, everything about it, it also raises another question that comes up with these pieces by Hearst, which is, what is the original piece? Because in some cases, the animals have actually been replaced since they start to rot. Formaldehyde isn't 100%. And so it come, kind of brings us to that question of, is it original and does it matter? And who's going to buy it anyway? So when we look at this piece, Mother and Child Divided, we see a very complex idea or a series of complex ideas brought together to make us uncomfortable and get at Hearst's main ideas. Those ideas of life and death, of love and loyalty. And that discomfort is intentional. It means that you're paying attention. It means that you're viewing the work. The postmodernist side, of course, comes in in that he's questioning society itself, the rules that maintain it by depicting this work. And it's also conceptual in that it's not about the piece itself. It's about the conversation that you're going to have with your buddy when you go and look at the piece. It's so simple, yet surprisingly complex.